Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Pompeii movie thoughts. So Trinity dies and she dies Trinity style. I'm, I'm just grateful that this time they cut away so that we didn't have to see the entire agonizing 20 minute death. But yeah, it's... And the whole thing, I mean, she's like, she's dying, and, and the, you know, Moriarty is, is lying there also dying. And she's like, kill him. And it's just like, <laughs> old ball and chain. Yeesh. Just, women, am I right? Always trying to get you to kill the, the you know, future husband of your daughter. Just, and, you know, and, and I thought that, you know, my, my father-in-law was, was bad. Turns out it was, you know, it was the mother-in-law that I should, should really have, have been worrying about. And just at, at the end, excuse me, you gotta love, it's, it's when everybody dies. Excuse me, it's, I mean, just to start at the very end. Once the, the, the two of them, excuse me, also die, there at the very end, you have the, you know, I mean, for, for a second there, it looks like they're gonna Titanic it. It looks like he's going to save her life. But then, you know, she's all like, no, I watched, you know, Bruce Almighty, I heard what Jim Carrey said about, you know, not, you know, being afraid to, to, to freeze my ass off or, you know, so no, I'm, I'm staying behind so we can die together and apparently the only survivor of Pompeii was possibly that horse, which provided it's not Mr. Ed, can't actually have any kind of impact on anything. So literally, the, the ending of the movie is Paul letting us know that we just wasted 97 minutes of our lives. There, there's literally no effect in anything that happens in this movie. And, you know, nothing in this movie that happens has any effect on any like, you know, I mean, when, when you do a story like this, typically the, the director will try to hint at, and then this was what led to this other thing, but nope, Paul just wants us to realize that everybody died, and there is no kind of, I mean, and then you have this romantic, oh, they, they died, but yeah, they, they died with each other's tongue down their throat, it's, <laughs> it's a little more, kind of, yeah, it's, it's romantic, in, uh, yeah, I also gotta love to, do, this, this is a movie that badly wants to be an R, it, it really does not want to be a PG-13, I mean, the, the opening massacre where you just, you keep cutting to, you know, someone who's about to be cut and the guy cutting, and then it cuts away because, they can't show, or, or, you know, the camera's just out of view, so you're seeing, and it's just like, did we really need to have this entire, if, if it didn't, if it wasn't an entire sequence, then we wouldn't notice how much that we're not seeing the massacre that we're supposed to be horrified by. I mean, like I said in the review, this entire thing could have been a flashback, the, the whole massacre of his, you know, family and stuff. Let's say, you know, first thing we see is him waking up, you know, not long before, you know, he's being woken up, you know, he has to go back out and, and fight, and, you know, he's, he's having these flashbacks from, you know, 
Yeah, like maybe as he's waking up, he sees, you know, he sees the swords hanging there, or he, he hears some, you know, some people getting stabbed, and then he wakes up, and then the swords were like, you know, something else, I don't know. But, yeah, instead they, they have to show this entire bit when, yeah, they can't actually show anything. And it also, it's really distinct in the battle scenes. You can really tell that the movie badly wants to show you more blood and, yeah, graphic wounds and the like. And, yeah, it, the, the movie feels really neutered by that. Now, the... Yeah, so, so let's take some of the separate death stuff. So, so yeah, when, when the, the volcano starts erupting, you, you gotta love how, you know, first you've got the, the politician trying to make good, you know, he, he's just trying to turn the volcano in his favor, which is really just politicians, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure if if the you know, yeah, I mean he he just about said that you know the the, the eruption was Obama's fault. So so yeah, he's he's like we hear that the volcano you know vol volcanoes has declared that man the master of Pompeii. Worthy of fighting a Roman, and then he sends in some Romans. It's like there's a volcanic eruption, and you're like thinking of your career and how you can make sure this guy dies. That's yeah. And it's like he just he really badly wants Jon Snow to die in this movie. Like you know, the, they come back on on the horse. He's like fifteen lashes, no less. Am I not merciful? Am I not merciful? And, you know, he, he talks, to the, talks to the guy, he dies first thing in the morning, okay, and then, you know, he's getting set up to, to die. Volcanus, yes, kill that man, Roman, you know, it's, yeah, man. And then, yeah, once they're really sure that the volcano is erupting, the fight continues, like, I, I think it's maybe the... the I think it's that, that, you know, officer guy fighting, I don't remember if it's at that point Atticus or Jon Snow or maybe both of them, but yeah, and it's just, really, are you, are you, are you seriously doing this? Are you fighting while there's this big, yeah, so, so anyway, they are, of course. And, and then, a little afterwards, you see that the Romans in this movie are apparently, like, freaking Umbrella Corporation in the, in the more recent Resident Evil movies. Like, the world is collapsing around them, and they're still like, well, those people are, they're gonna die right now, you know, we're, we're gonna, I mean, he's like... He doesn't even care about her, it's just that she's now his property, so certainly a slave isn't taking her away from him. And, like, you know, we have to kill these guys because... <laughs> because they made us look bad. And that's more important than getting out when there's a volcano eruption. I don't know, I just feel like, you know, when, when you see that early shot, which is also in the trailer, of just you know, the massive volcano under the, the city, I personally would have a little bit more respect for the volcano, even if it hadn't, like, erupted in, you know, like, apparently, like, in real life, the volcano hadn't erupted since there were, you know, since a while before the Romans got there, so there was no real historical record. They didn't know that it had erupted and that it could again. So, yeah, let's see, that brings us to, yeah, and then we have Atticus versus the, the officer, 
and it's this thing of basically the whole movie from you know in in part when it's not doing other things is Milo trying to get revenge on Corvus and the officer and he doesn't really get revenge on either. He leaves Corvus to die. And the the and and Atticus, you know, takes care of, of the officer. And there again, you know, once Atticus has been stabbed, then Atticus like grabs him, you know, snaps the, the blade and forces it up. And I'm just like, how is Excuse me, I mean, I, I get that, you know, he can't move his arms too much, but what about his, excuse me, what about his legs? I mean, the, the Atticus is, like, sitting down. How could he possibly, I, I figure he could just, like, kick him or, you know, I mean, when, when the times get tough, you maybe fight dirty, kick him in the crotch. I mean, what is he going to do exactly that, you know, or if you can't get to that, kick him in the stomach, something, but just... He's acting like he can't move at all when, sure, he can't move, like, his arms and he can't, like, jump away because his arms are locked, but, yeah, it, it really, yeah, and, and then we again have the, you know, we were about to die, salute you, and it's just, wow, that's just, that's just silly. Sillier, of course, was when, you know, it's like they're getting to Cassius' place, and like there's a bunch of people, and then like all these you know rocks start falling from like I, I don't remember the exact term, but I think those are somewhat accurate to to real life, and like there are like five people, and all of them catch one right in, in the head, and it's just. Nobody in my theater could could keep from laughing. It's just, and it feels like that was probably supposed to be like horrifying or dramatic or something. Yeah, it just, it's it's so clear that the the screenwriter needs some people to, you know, to die so that we can have this big. And that's also after all this stuff with oh so and so many people. I mean. If he wanted the movie to have a lot of people escape, then he could just have had the movie have a lot of people escape. But instead, he has this big thing of everybody's running, and yet, not long after everyone starts running, no one is left. Like, everybody died. The, you know, thousands of people died in a couple of minutes. And yet, you know, basically, I mean, you can still get through the streets, and there are these, yeah, it's just, wow, and it's, it's very typical, Paul W. S. Anderson, to just, you know, he, he really wants this to be a thing, but then, eh, we, could, we could go with this for, for a little while, I swear, when you watch the, the Resident Evil movies, maybe, yeah, past the first two, it's like each of them is, it's, it's like one of these, you know, series of, of B-movies. Something that Obscurus Looper would review, really, like Witchcraft, or, you know, what's the one? The, the one with Radu, you know, where each movie had a different director who didn't really know, who didn't care about the, the previous continuity, and who just went in there with their own idea. But nope! All of them were written by Paul, and it's just mind-boggling how he actually managed to... So anyway, yeah, then we have Corvus and the... and, and Milo fighting some, and then he, at the end, just leaves him there, you know, and... Yeah, you know, and she she's about to ride off with him. She, she's probably just relieved that he didn't kill the horse on, on the way there. And, yeah, he, he leaves Corvus there to die, so he doesn't really, you know, I mean, it's, I guess it's the, the thing about, I don't have to save you either, but, yeah, I just, I feel like, 
it there wasn't really any build up to him you know not just killing him you know i mean every time he's been you know reflecting on something like this it was you know oh i, I want to kill them all i want revenge you know i mean it's literally like the the two times that the first two times she meets him and like has any kind of communication with him you know the first time is okay help me snap the neck of this horse you know and you're, yeah help me all oh, the horse there okay and and you know and then the second time it's like okay you, oh you fixed my horse thank you I want to kill them all well I'm definitely in love with you now is <laughs> You know, and, and then it's like, you know, they can't come down from there or they'll punish you. And then he reaches out his hand and it's like, what? And and she gets up and then they're riding out and then suddenly it's like, let's both go away from this place. Where did this come from? What is even the, what? How did the, what makes him so sure that she wants out? I mean, it would appear that she does, but what told him that, and why is, <laughs> yeah, and what, what makes him so, so sure, I mean, sure, it's that stupid romantic notion of love at first sight, you know, but, yeah, it's just kind of, it's not very, it's also kind of, wasn't he at that point, kind of friends with Atticus, would he really abandon Atticus just for a nice piece of tail? I don't know. Bros before, that's all I'm saying. They seriously had, the, the, the two of them had way more chemistry than, than Milo and, and Cassia, Ser seriously. Now, yeah, the, the, let's see, there was a, Yeah, yeah, and and as as they're running, you know, it becomes clear that you know the the harbor is not gonna work out, and you know we we even see for sure that one guy who left to in in time to make sure that he would get out alive. Nope, he still didn't make it. You know, the the mountain really did not want him to. You know, and I mean, and it was pretty clear. I mean. You know, Echo is basically standing there trying to, you know, determine the, the you know, the, the future path of the, you know, of, of his character, and immediately the, the you know, the, the powers that be, Corvus says, you know, kill that man, basically, you know, had, we gotta have some kind of, we gotta put an end to this, and then the mountain has just had enough of Corvus's silly accent and just explodes. And and yeah, so so yeah, they're they're riding the the you know the harbor is no good you know and it's like no we 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 have to go back down there no no Cass we have to go back and just. Yeah, also, I love the, the thing about how the horse apparently can't carry them both. It was doing fine, but then suddenly, like, a couple of fireballs land near it. It upends twice, and they both land. I'm just like, get on the horse, both of you, and then keep riding. That was clearly just, you know, that, that was completely random. It's not like... They, you know, it keeps going in a, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not artillery fire that's gradually approaching you, it's just you get back up on the horse and then, you know, keep moving. And it's again, it's so clearly this thing of, like, you know, Anderson desperately wants it to to end there, end like that. So he has a couple, he drops a couple of fireballs there because as the filmmaker, that is his prerogative, and he forgets that 
we, the audience, might want a proper, excuse me, you know, some, some kind of internal logic, excuse me. And really, it could have, they, they could have had something that worked. They're, they, I mean, they already had this big earthquake that, you know, where that one guy from the horse, you know, when, you know, I mean, at that point it would probably be that the horse was more unlucky than if, if it was still Vilius or something like that. Yeah. So, actually, yeah, if, if the ground collapsed in front of it, it would be like, okay, I've had enough of this, and just turn back, and like, the volcano I can deal with. Earthquakes? I am just no more. You know. Yeah, have some have some ground collapse in front of them, have, have it need, like, a big jump, and it's like, it can't jump over with both of us on here. Okay, something like that, but... Yeah. Now, I suppose that the the also as you know on on pointless stuff that as as I said the whole thing is is point. I mean this whole thing of but will you invest in in this you know in 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 the city and. Well, maybe, if I may have your daughter, and, yeah, it's like, none of those people survive, and the, the city is lost, so, nothing, none of that actually mattered, like, I mean, they could have had some, let, let's say there was some big thing relating to the, the future of Rome, and where, like, they had something that could have completely changed the way history went, but then they just exactly didn't get that out of the city in time, or something. Or maybe they did, and it was like, oh, good thing that guy got out with those plans of this or that thing, or, you know, this or that thing wouldn't have gone the way it did historically. Something like that, but nope, it's just all pointless. And... A specific, a nice specific example of that. In in addition to the guy who made sure to get out on a boat before, you know, before realizing you're gonna need a more fireproof boat. Atticus stops and saves, you know, this this one girl and gets to 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 the mother, and then you know he turns and he just runs away. So I I don't know. I guess they just haven't bathed in a while or something. We never see those two again, and given the way everything else goes in this, presumably they just died, you know. And and there's you know the bit where like the yeah Corvus and the others are like just cutting down you know civilians just to try to get to you know yeah to to a safe boat and. Yeah, just... So anyway, I... Uh, yes, I... <laughs> Paul be trolling pretty hard. You go into this movie, you expect a volcano, which you get just a little bit for, for the very end. We ba barely have anybody running away from it. We barely have any, like... Yeah, it's, it's almost... There's almost nothing, none of it terrorizing and threatening people. There's a little bit of stuff falling over and, and people running and such. But more it's that there are these smaller, sometimes pointless things going on while the volcano is in the back, is, is merely the backdrop. So, you know, you have Atticus and Milo getting a, a couple of, you know, yeah, cutting down some guards, and, you know, Cassia gets taken, and th then, you know, Atticus fights the, the officer, Milo fights, you know, get, rides down the, the carriage, gets Cassia, you know, kills, or not, kills Corvus, rather, gets Cassia back, you know, all this stuff where it's just, 
if you want that to be your movie, fine, but why, why a volcano in the background of that when, yeah, it doesn't really, I mean, if you really think about it, that could have been anything. In fact, there didn't even really need to be, yeah, if you, if there wasn't a volcano, I want someone to do a re-edit of this with, like, just take away, take away the ash clouds and such, and just have it be, you know, yeah, when, when it's like, you know, the officers coming in close, I can take care of one gladiator, and then, you know, he, he hits the magic button, which is like a modern thing, and somehow it works, and we even see the locks open, so we see how much sense it doesn't make. Somehow, one, one little thing unlocks all the gates, which also just doesn't, why would they even have that? It's, it's a gladiatorial, why would they release all of them at once? It, I, I don't know, in a prison, I kind of, figure it's maybe some kind of fire escape thing that if, you know, if the thing's on fire, they're not going to just let the prisoners, you know, burn to death in there, they're going to release them all, and so they can, I don't know, I don't know exactly, but back then I don't think they really cared about things like that, especially these guys were literally just there for entertainment, so, yeah, and you have the... Yeah, yeah, so, and, and then they run towards the officer, and he, you know, gets to the other side of the gate, and then, you know, the guy in charge there gets beaten down. That could be the start of that, and then it could just be that these, you know, these gladiators are trying to revolt, and the Romans are trying to get away to maybe get back up or something. That would have been a fine backdrop for these scenes, because the tornado... Volcano doesn't really affect anything when that is going on. It doesn't, and and it could have when when you think about it. I mean, if you had something where like, well, let's see. Well, yeah, let's let's say something collapses and one of them has to dive out of the way, and then the other goes in for an attack, or like. They're standing in front of each other. Maybe their swords are, you know, and the ground splits between. Actually, that might have happened at some point in this. But yeah, stuff like that. Then you're using your volcano. But in this, it's just the backdrop, and it doesn't really do anything. Anyway, that's what you might expect from the volcano part. The other part is, of course, the gladiator part. So you expect some gladiatorial battles. You know, I mean. Those were not the, I mean, when you watch Spartacus and Gladiator, and you should, you aren't, I mean, the, those scenes were not the sole point of those films, but they are there, and they are really well done. It's, it's partially an expectation, and also we, you know, emotionally there's something at stake for us. Here... There's supposed to be something emotionally at stake. I mean, why else would you mine Titanic? But there really isn't very much gladiatorial... I Actually, I'm pretty sure Paul went into this with a determination to not put a single straight gladiator on gladiator fight in here. Actually, I suppose the, the opening one does just barely qualify. But it's over in like half a minute. Like they start attacking each other, and it's like one attack per each that he needs to do to to kill them all. You know, the, the, and this is of course why you see so little, you know, actual fighting and such in the trailer because the fighting that there is, and there is, you know, not a lot of it's good, but there is a reasonable amount of fighting in this, but almost none of it is you know, gladiator on gladiator, really. So you have that very short opening one, and you have the... you have the practice thing of, of Atticus and Milo, and then I suppose if you're generous you could count the, the bit near the end where, you know, where they're tied up, or that they're chained, and then in come the, the other gladiators, and this is where, like I say in the review, this is, 
you know, one of the really big action scenes, one of the really big fights. And it's actually, it's decent enough. I mean, basically, I mean, like I said, they rip off the, you know, shields up and pushing them back, you know, the Thermobili thing from 300. But beyond that, it's not actually too bad of, of this... You know, basically, yeah, you, you have, I don't know, half a dozen of the good guys tied up, you know, our, our two named characters and then some n nameless gladiators chained to this one place, and then you have more people surrounding them and attacking. That's a pretty decent setup for a, a fight scene, and it also, it plays out pretty decently, you know, the the bit where Milo has to hold them off while Atticus is, you know, chopping down. I'm not sure he would even have an axe, I'm not sure they did that too much in the gladiatorial, but I don't know, maybe, you know, he chops down the things so they can get free, and then they start using the chain where he's riding around, and, you know, he clotheslines these guys with the chain, and then this other guy grabs the chain, yanks him off the horse. Some of this stuff is pretty good, and it doesn't really, it doesn't feel too been there, done that. But, this is, we're not really seeing them fight someone we really want to see them fight. These aren't actual Roman troops. These are just other gladiators. And it's like, it could just have easily been Milo and Atticus as one of the, the guys who had to just go and, and kill. You know what? That would have been better, actually. Why not just reverse the scene and have, like, have someone that Atticus and Milo don't like on the other end of that. So they're supposed to be killing this guy who's basically defenseless. And they, like, refuse. And then they have to fight with him against... See, just on the spot, just wrote a better scene. Anyway, you know, if I do say so myself. I suppose that... But, but yeah, there's, there's almost no just straight up gladiators fighting gladiators. In, in this. One of the bigger ones is Atticus and Milo fighting that one time, which doesn't really... I mean, I guess it helps build towards their friendship or something. Yeah, that's a about it. And Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.